Hello, statistics students, summer 2020. Welcome to week two. I hope your reading in the book has been going well and you've checked out some videos and practice problems. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the main themes for this week, which are histograms and box plots. And histograms, we actually started on last week because a histogram is just a bar chart of a frequency table. So we'll make a frequency table and turn it into a bar chart. And then a box plot just plots a few percentiles, which you've also been learning about this week. So let's get busy. So I have a data set here I grabbed from, let's see, where did I get this data set? And we'll blow this up for you. CDC, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. So this is uh, recent data on the prevalence of obesity by state. So the 23 here means that 23% of people who live in Colorado are obese. And obese is related to the body mass index, which is a whole nother issue. So if you wanna learn more about obesity, I have some links down here. So there's a, a video from the Atlantic uh, about obesity these days and how people in the 80s were skinnier than people today, even if they ate and exercised the same way then and now at the same age. So let's take a 30-year-old in the 80s that ate well and exercised daily and a 30-year-old in the um, 1920s that ate well and exercised daily the same way. Uh, the, the person in the 80 or 80s would be slightly thinner than a person today. Why is that, right? So there's a lot of reasons why. Um, and then there's a, a US News uh, had an article about obesity recently. And then uh, here's some information about what obesity means according to the CDC. And then the data that I got came from this top link there. So feel free to check it out. Anyway, uh, looking at this list of numbers, I put them in order from uh, the lowest prevalence of, of obesity. So Colorado seems to have the thinnest people in the country. And then down at the bottom here, uh, West Virginia seems to have the chubbiest people uh, in the country. And obesity leads to a, a lot of diseases, uh, especially now there's, there's a lot of evidence that uh, obesity and COVID-19 do not go well together. So this is a big concern. So what I wanna do is uh, I just wanna group uh, these together. And to do that, I need to know the min and the max, uh, which I can just see because I'd already put them in order. If you're not sure how to order something in a spreadsheet, what you do is you highlight all relevant rows and columns, including the head at the top. So I wanna know that one column stands for state and the other for prevalence, uh, and then I'm gonna to go to data in Google and sort range. And there's a similar tool in Excel for you Excel users. Uh, I have a header row and I wanna sort by prevalence and I could put them in reverse order too. So have the, the, the largest number at the top and then down to the smallest. So here I have uh, Mississippi at the top and then down at the bottom will now be Colorado. All right. Uh, so the order that you put them in, you could do alphabetical by state, whatever you want. Uh, again, to set up my frequency table, which I'll put over here, say, and you should always label everything so when you look back at it, you know what the hell you're looking at. Uh, I need to decide on how I'm gonna group, and at first I do what are called group maxes. Uh, and then from there, I start counting up how many fit that description. Uh, so before I do that though, I'd like to know what the min is and what the max is. And even though I can see them, I'm gonna actually have the computer calculate them. So equals min, and then highlight your data. A trick is if you're at the top number, control shift down arrow will look for the bottom number, which is kind of a cute trick. And then equals max, and then get the starting number. Control shift down arrow jumps me to the bottom, which is helpful on a very long list because scrolling down a thousand numbers or more is uh, annoying. All right, so here I can say I need to get from 23 to 39, and usually we want somewhere between five and 20 groups. Um, so let's say I'm gonna go for 10 groups. So I can estimate a group width by just taking the difference in those two numbers, which is called the range. Let's calculate that here too. 
which is just, oops, the max minus the min. So I have a range of about 16.5%. Uh, so if I take that number and divide by, let's say I want 10 uh, groups, then that means each group should be about 1.65 wide. Now that's kind of an inconvenient number. I'm going to go for a nicer number like 2. Uh, or I could jump down to 1, or maybe even 1.5, right? There's lots of ways to do it. Um, and then 23 is the minimum, so my first group should contain that. So maybe I'm going to start at 24. So that's going to be the end of my first group. And then if I jump by 2, the next one will be 26. Once you have a pattern uh, of uh, numbers that are the same distance apart, you can just autofill that. So highlight the two numbers, autofill down till you get past the max and 40 is past the max. Okay, so I ended up with, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm building a frequency table. This was actually last week's, uh, some work from last week. Uh, for those Excel users out there, to get the count, which is also the frequency, you highlight each adjacent cell to the group max plus 1, and then you just don't click, just start typing equals frequency, and select the frequency command, and the frequency command wants to know um, where is your data. So that's over here. Oh, control shift enter, let's do the quick way. Comma, what are your groups? And so that's right here. And then in Google, you just hit enter. In Excel, you have to do control shift enter to get it to fill all of the counts. All right, so here are the counts. Now, what's really going on here? I'm going to insert a row, a column in between to explain. And this was in last week's video. Let's put a column to the left. OK, so the numbers I'm, I'm grouping, the 24, 26, they are prevalence of obesity percentages. So I'm going to give this a better title here. Instead of calling it groups, I'm going to call it percent obese, because that's what these numbers mean. And uh, the next one, let's do that. So this first one counted any number that was up to 24. This one goes after 24, but up to 26. So since these have one decimal point uh, in the data here, that means this group here is any number that is 24.1 up to 26. And the next one would be 26.1 up to 28. So the previous one here, must have been 22.1 up to 24. And notice that the end numbers are all two apart and the beginning numbers are all two apart, right? 22.1, 24.1, 26.1, and so on. So these are actually what's going on there. Um, uh, I usually don't graph the group maxes because they're kind of misleading. What does it mean to be 26 or 28? It really means 24.1 up to 26, and there's five numbers the computer counted that fit that. You don't want to count those by hand because you're likely to make a mistake. And you have to just keep typing these. There's no shortcut here. So then i got to type 28.1 up to 30 and so on. Now, um, is this the best frequency table? The answer is no. There is no best one. Uh, so it could be I would be better off jumping by 1.5 instead of 2, or jumping by 1.65, right? There's lots of ways to do it. I'm just going to go for this one right here, and then I'll make another one later. So 30.1 up to 32. Feel, forward to, feel free to pass, fast forward through this boring stuff. Up to, what, 34, 34.1 up to... 36, and the book has a slightly different way of doing this, which is fine too. So you could read about that in the book. I'm sure you already have. And my last one's 38.1 up to 40. And usually when you make a frequency table, you want each group to be the same width, right? So these are all the same width there. And now I'm going to graph it to see what they look like. And you may notice in my other videos, I usually graph before I type these numbers, because that's a lot of work, I usually graph the group max and the count together. And then if I like the look of it, then I type all of that extra work. All right, so that's this is a frequency table right there. Uh, now I want to chart it. So insert a chart. And sometimes the computer guesses right and gives me a, uh, a column chart. Now, most spreadsheets do have the ability to make a histogram, but that skips the frequency table. 
Uh, so don't choose the histogram at option if you already have a frequency table. A frequency table, or a histogram is simply a bar chart, a column chart of a frequency table. Okay, got to get that straight, otherwise you have the wrong graph. Uh, and the computer picked titles for me, which are not good ones, because if my mom looked at that, she'd have no idea what count versus percent obesity means. So we need better titles. Uh, and yeah, I think that's okay. It's a relatively bell-shaped curve here, but this strange hump at 34 to 36. Um, people are considered obese uh, in, in, anyway, let's, let's not talk about what that means. That's a whole other issue. Let's give this a better title. This is prevalence, prevalence, didn't spell that right, of obesity in U.S. states. So give it a title that makes sense and double check your spelling. Thank you. Count, what the hell, what does count mean, right? Um, what am I counting here? Well, uh, let's look back over here and see what we're counting because my mom would look at that and said, count, what do you mean count? Count what? Oops, come on, move. Oh, it did move, and then it recentered. All right, uh, let's see. So we counted that there was one state here that had uh, percent obesity under 24%, and that was Colorado. There's five states that had a percent. So what are we counting? We're counting states. All right, so let's make a better title. Instead of count, this is the number of states that fit in each group. So, number of states. See, the picking good titles takes a lot of thought. It's not obvious. It's not easy. You got to look back at the data and think about what the heck you're doing, what the data means. Percent obese. Okay. So, I think this looks good. We have prevalence of obesity in U.S. states, and then down here we have percent obese. Thirty-one, thirty-point-one to thirty-two percent happened in. What, nine states? Yep. All right, that looks pretty good. This is a frequency table uh, turned into a histogram. So here's my frequency table right here, and here is the histogram. The relative frequency table I can just put right here, adding on. I don't need to make a whole new table. Relative, relative frequency. And all that means is take uh, the count and divide by the total number. So let's see what the total number is here. Let's add up. Oops, wrong command. How many numbers did we have? And you might say, well, there's 50 states, duh. But sometimes we count things like Puerto Rico and District of Columbia. So I really do need to double check which uh, I have here. And I have, ooh, what did I do? Ooh, I did the wrong thing. I didn't want to do a sum, I want to do a count. All right, let's redo that. Two ways to double check this. I could sum the numbers above, just to double check I did this right. Okay, there are 53 numbers in that list, and then if I just double check with a count, and I go over here and I count the number of states listed that the CDC gave me, they better match. Ooh, come here. There we go. And what do I got? Zero. What happened? Oh, count only counts numbers. Exactly. There's a different count command called, what is it, count A? That counts, let's see, that only counts values. This one, well, maybe there's that one right there. Let's try that. Okay, there we go, yep. So there were 53 states listed there. So we have Puerto Rico, okay, there's Puerto Rico in there, and the Virgin Islands are probably in there, and the District of Columbia, which takes us from 50 to 53. Um, all right, so relative frequency means I just go equals the count divided by 53 in this case. And so always double check what your count is, otherwise your relative frequency is wrong. And then I wanna make sure those add up to 100%. Yep, 
and then I'd rather see percents there than decimals. So let's format that as percent. Cool. Okay. So now I have a frequency table based on these groupings. And I have a relative frequency table all together. So if you want to do the relative frequencies, what you would do is you would select this group and that group there, skipping the count in the middle. To do that on a spreadsheet, make your first selection, let go of your mouse, and then hold down Control to make your next selection. And that way you can select things that are disconnected. And then I can say, hey, make me a chart. Okay. Um, the only difference here is we'll make a better title there. I think the title on the axis is the bottom there. But relative frequency is, a, is not a good title for this axis because I wouldn't publish that in a magazine because most people wouldn't understand it. If I sent this to my mom, she's like, what do you mean relative frequency? Frequency of what? Well, remember, we're counting states, but in this case, it would be percent of states. So that would be a better title. And I do expect you to think about what's a good title for each place. And you always need a good title at the top and then access titles. Um, so again, we need a better title here too. I'll leave that up to you. And then reposition it somewhere that it's gonna look better. So we'll put this underneath the other one. That's under, close enough. All right, next thing, bar, uh, box plot. Uh, to do a box plot, I need these numbers here. So I'm gonna grab the title and all the numbers. And I like using stack key to make box plots. Excel makes box plots, but they're not a good one. Don't do it. So let's go to stat key. There's a link to stat key in the course materials. Uh, I didn't spell it right. That's okay. There it is right at the top. And then there's videos showing me do this before. And let's zoom in a little bit. All right, so we just need to get rid of their data and edit it and put in ours. So delete and paste. And remember, I grabbed the title at the top. If you didn't, pay attention to that. So I do not have a first column of identifiers, like which state is which. Uh, but I do have a header at the top that says what these numbers mean. So make sure you double check if you need these boxes checked or not. Otherwise, it'll screw up your results. And I want a box plot. All right, then I just need to do a screenshot of that. So uh, different computers do screenshots differently. So normally what has to happen is you do your screenshot, you save it, and then you upload that screenshot into your file. So my computer's a little different than most. Screenshot. If you're in Windows, you're going to use the snipping tool. So use your snipping tool to grab the chart. And you definitely want the numbers at the bottom because we're going to have to line it up with our spreadsheet stuff. And this is obesity box plot. So give it a name and remember where you put it. And so now I go back here and I'm going to stick it in underneath, let's say the, might as well put it in under the relative frequency. So in Google, it's, oops, insert image, oversells, Excel has a similar feature, find your file, mine was under pictures, and Google will just throw it in there wherever my mouse was last. Where'd you put it, Google? Oh, way up there. All right, so next thing I need to do is line, reposition it and line it up. And that takes a little bit of work. So I'm going to zoom out for a second to do that. And I'm going to put it under this one. All right, so what I want to do is I want to make sure the scale uh, in the histogram matches the scale down here. So I need to line up 25 with wherever 25 goes here. Now 25 is right between 24.1 and 26, so I want that line to match up there. And let's pick another one. 35 is gonna be right in between there, so that's almost the right size. So then you can grab the corners and try to resize it. So I want 35 there and 25 in the middle of that stack. So 25 is in the middle there, 35 is almost in the middle there, a little bit smaller. So this part is an art. You're just going to play around till you get it right. All right, that's close enough. Um, so I'm just going to put this up to kind of double check. All right, 25 is in the middle there. 
35 is in the middle there, roughly close enough. All right, so I did it. So we'll just stick that again, lining up. Cool. So now I have a box plot that's lined up with a histogram. Now the point of lining these two up is what should happen is uh, anywhere you have a bunch of short stacks, you should have a longer section in your uh, box plot. Anywhere you have taller stacks, you should have a narrower section here. Because uh, each of these regions, this line right there, that's 25% of your data goes from, uh, what's the scale here? from about 23 to 28. So between 23 and 28, 25% of the states live. Another 25% live in the region from 28 to say 31, and then from 31 to what about 34 is the other 25%, and then the last 25% of states live in this region here. So a box plot just breaks up quarters of your data. Um, and so we can see there's a narrow range of that 25% of these states. So let's see, a quarter of 53 is what? Uh, half of 53 is like 26, half of that is like 13. So about 13 states live in this region, 13 states live in this prevalence region, 13 in here and 13 in there, right? So this is like living out in the country, lots of elbow room. Here we're all tightly packed like in a city. So it's just a visual display of how uh, the, the percentages in states are, are split up. All right, that's it. That was a lot. Take care. Do good math. Hope you're enjoying this cool summer. Ta-ta.